the course of the interview, Mr Derby made an accusation about another party, the English Democrats. Now we're fair-minded people here at The Daily Politics, so we've invited the leader of the English Democrats, Robin Tilbrook, for his right to reply. Now here's a reminder of that interview with Simon Derby. If you've got senior BNP member Eddie Butler says Nick Griffin is busily running the BNP ship aground and it's quite possible that the BNP will not survive his antics, is it time to start looking at Nick Griffin's leadership? Well, Eddie Butler isn't a senior BNP member. He's allied himself to the English Democrats, who are a civil nationalist party, with links, would you believe, to Sinn Féin. Well, Simon Darby there, making uh, two accusations. Well, Robin uh, Tilbrook of the English Democrats uh, joins me now. Can you clear this yeah. up for us? Is Eddie Butler associated with your party? Uh, we've been in talks with him and uh, we've met him, but uh, he's not a member of the English Democrats uh, as, as we speak at the moment. Would you like him to be a member of the English Democrats? Um, we'd, we'd certainly consider it if he wants to make an application to, to join. Now, Simon Darby mentioned something else about alliances with Sinn Féin. Mm. Now, there are some suggestions on internet forums that your party may have approached them. Is that true? Um, we never approached them as a party. Um, there was, there was a, um, a member who was then a member of the National Council who... Um, took it upon himself to, uh, to, to write uh, an email to them. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there's never actually been any contact at all. Um, and, um, and it's not something you would pursue? Um, no, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's not something that um, would be a, a, a normal part of our agenda, but um, um, obviously we, we would talk to anybody, yes. so, um, you know, in, within reason. So. Um, uh, I, w I wouldn't say that we would absolutely refuse to talk to uh, Sinn Féin, of course. But the implication, actually, that that former member contacted Sinn Féin was about donations. Now, have you ever received donations from or accepted yeah. donations from Sinn Féin? No, we, um, as, as a party, we're, we've been entirely funded by members of the party. We've never received any donations from um, outside members, uh, actually. Uh, and uh, so, uh, basically, pretty much everything that was said was, in one sense or another, untrue. Right. Well, we've cleared that up then. Well, let's broaden things out. I mean, you'd like to see an English Parliament. I mean, how would it work and how, how much would it cost? Well, uh, the thing is, of course, um, if I, if we just put, put, put this in context, you know, we, we have actually just had uh, the Scottish National Party yes. win um, an overall majority yes. uh, in the... Um, uh, in the Scottish Parliament, which I, I think will prove, in fact, to be one of the um, most lasting legacies of the Labour government. Um, and um, what, what we're uh, left with is a situation where we've got devolution in, in Scotland, we've got devolution in Northern Ireland, we've got devolution in Wales, all different models mm -hmm. of it, um, and nothing at all for England. And, in fact, uh, both Labour and Conservatives were trying to break England up. And, and, and this is why uh, the English well, Democrats... Well, I don't, think, I don't think the parties would say that they were actually trying to break up the Union. In fact... Uh, they were they trying would... to break England up into regions. They weren't trying to break the Union up. Their idea is that if you break up England, then that keeps um, the, the Union but, somehow. But where is the, where's the demand? Where's the appetite for it? I mean, it, to, to some extent, we've had devolved Parliament and Assemblies for, you know, many years. The fact that Alex Salmond's won an overall uh, majority doesn't, doesn't change the fact that, you know, devolved Parliament and Assemblies have been there. Where is the appetite from people to say they want an English Parliament? Well, the, 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 the um, Scottish Parliament has only been in existence, after all, since um, 1999. Uh, yes, so it's, well, it, it's not all that many years. Uh, and the Scottish, uh, the SNP, um, its roots date back to 1927, and they've been campaigning for independence. But where's there. the demand in England it, for an English in, poll? In, in England, what, what we've got is a, a whole series of opinion polls now for about four years, uh, four or five years, which have shown consistently over 60% support for an English Parliament. Um, and one of those polls being conducted by the BBC, which showed over 60% support. So there, there is demand for uh, an English Parliament. And, and what's more, it is the only logical answer uh, to the to conundrum the that we're currently in. Yeah, I mean, would you be happy, for example, if Scottish and Welsh MPs were just not allowed to vote on English-only issues? Because that is the conundrum, that Scottish and Welsh MPs vote on issues that don't actually affect their constituents. That, that's the West Lothian question, yes. conundrum. Um, but there is a wider conundrum, because in fact, of course, it's not just representation within Parliament. It's also a question of how the government itself works through ministers and so on. Uh, so what we want to see is a First Minister for England, a government for England, and a Parliament for England with at least the same powers as the Scottish ones. And after all, the Unionist parties are moving towards having greater powers than Scottish I mean, Do you agree with the idea that there is an appetite for there this? Is, there, there, there is an appetite. Um, as Robin says, 
recently there was a poll of 5,000 mm. people. It didn't show 60%, but it showed 48% thought that they would be quite interested in considering an English parliament and other issues. They didn't say they wanted it. But, and, and you've got mainstream politicians like John Cruddus, who writes a lot about needing to consider an mm. English parliament. And he links it, interestingly, to issues like, uh, well, not issues like, but sort of the issues around the minimum wage, etc. This idea that because of globalisation and people feeling exposed, that they feel they sort of lost various levels of identity and an Englishness would help to sort of tap into that. And if you don't, as a mainstream party, tap into that, then you expose these voters and people to the BNP, etc., who are talking more vividly about Englishness and national identity. And so I think it is, I think there is a proper debate going on. Well, and the, the, that appetite there exists. I'll, I'll come back to you very briefly. <laughs> then, then, you know, looking at what might happen in Scotland, I mean, now Alex Hamilton has said he's going to have um, a, a referendum on independence, even though the polls have indicated that there isn't a huge appetite actually yeah. for independence. Has that fueled that feeling of, of wanting something similar in, in, in England? Well, well, possibly. I agree there's an underlying appetite for it. I, I still think it would be crazy for any mainstream politician mm. to do anything about it anytime soon. I think the lesson of May the 5th was that the public's indifference to constitutional tinkering at a time of economic and fiscal strife. Yes, and, 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 and so you know, even if there is appetite for the, for the idea, you don't have much support um, electorally directly for that. And, and, and Janan has a good point that people don't really want any more change, more elections, more parliaments, more... assemblies for paltry yes. turnouts we, we, as well. Yeah. We, we, we've been going just over eight years. Um, we've been building up consistently. Every election we've done better than we did before. Um, yes, we haven't got to the point okay. where we can force uh, mainstream politicians, as you put them, uh, to, to do things uh, on, this, on this issue. But I think we will get to that point. Okay. And, and um, Alex Salmon's victory is going to help us enormously. All right, Robin Tilbrook, thank you for coming in. Now, it didn't begin well for a couple just a year into their marriage. The rows, the squabbles, the hissy fit.